what is your approach if you have a weight stable um intermediate strong dude he's intermediate he hasn't gone through a lot of cycles he's been maintaining for a long time and he says i want to put on more muscle right and i've been following this program for a year or two years I've been hitting a pro, you know, like body weight's the same. I'm pretty strong. How do I make myself look different? Because I've looked the same for the last two or three years on this mm-hmm. program. That seems fine. Yeah. Like, Which we some- get that a lot. Right. We Tell get me that how a you lot deal with from that. our athletes. Yeah, we get that a lot from our athletes. And Bert, let me ask you. Intermediate, solid, strong dude. What's the, what's the chances that they can recomp at that phase? So body weight stable, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Hasn't dieted in over two years. I'm just making shit up now. Hasn't dieted in over two years. So has been maintaining. Looks good. Decently beach appropriate for the gram. <laughs> but now well, obviously like, got a good I, amount of muscle. Yeah. 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 So now I want to take it to the next level. I don't want to compete or anything. I just want to like see some changes over the next year or two. What what can you help me with? Good place to start. Um, I think is we'd have to get rid of the weight stable part. You know, word. Mm. Um, you know, there's. I think you can do that at first, but then th- there is a point where, like, even if you're a female, it doesn't have to be a crap ton of weight. But it's like, hey, this is what we usually weigh. If we just slowly over the course of the next six to ten months gained, you know, five to seven percent of our current. So body get a little weight. fluffy for a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so have that have that energy on your side. Um. Because, uh, yeah, you know, it gets to a certain point where it's like, you know, any muscle past this point, it's like really to your body, it's an extracurricular, you know? Yeah. So, um, so um, yeah, they need to have the funds for it. Um, I'd say probably once we have that going, and, and quite often that, that that in itself fixes a lot, um, I'd say the next step would be is it would be like, hey, let's look at basically – everything you're doing in, in the gym once we've selected what movements we're going to use and let's see how you're doing it um because quite often it's like you you'll see it's like oh okay that's why your calves look this way it's because you know this is how you do them okay this is why your glutes haven't grown a whole lot past year one it's because um you know this is how you perform this movement or that movement hey your hinge sucks oh hey maybe that movement doesn't fit you i think i have a better movement that's going to fit uh, the way you're put together just just a bit better so um so first things first it's like i think you just you need to have energy on your side and then it's like okay now i took care of the programming let's let's just split the hairs in regards to like what's going on within the x's and o's because um man you could have a really good program but if like there's something off when it comes to the way exercises are are executed um that's really going to impact how much we do get out of that program right. um I'd say that, shoot, you have someone with, like, just really good form in regards to uh, whatever the objective is that they're trying to get out of their strength training, where their form is, like, really good, but the program is meh. That person actually makes more progress than the person who has a fantastic program, but there's just, there's enough things wrong with their lifting technique. Mm -hmm. Um, I think over longer periods of time, um, our form Nazi would probably make better progress. Um, but, uh, But, yeah, those are probably the two biggest common places that that I, I pick up on and obviously just to throw that in there um uh now more than ever i think especially since the whole because a lot of the whole initial like uh anxiety that came from meal timing you know part of it was like uh, you know you got to keep your metabolism going there was that myth but the other one was just like for the for the sake of protein um and, and i think more than ever you see strength athletes far beyond like whatever i i, I never thought i'd see it get this bad um you see a lot of athletes and when it comes to their protein intake and maybe how they distribute it it's just not nearly like the way as if it's, it's not the way they're not they're not maximizing their their body comp just just via that you know okay um so so yeah that's that's usually my those are my go-to's weird yeah, and Berno pretty much took the words out of my mouth because I somebody that's an intermediate recomping is definitely possible, but when you're talking recomping, you're not talking like in terms of a couple months. You know, you're talking in terms of of like six or eight months. When we see these these tremendous before and after body recomposition recomposition changes, one of two things happened: either they dieted way, way, way down, 
And then now that they've come back up again, their body looks a whole lot different. That took the course of like an eight or, you know, 10 month prep uh, in order for that to happen. Or the opposite happens, you know, good, strong, muscular person, and they end up putting on 20, 25, 30 pounds, all of course, all while training, because training is the driving factor that builds muscle. And then they diet back down again, and now they look tr- dramatically different. So that recomp can happen, but we're not talking a short period of time. This is stuff that's got to happen in phases, and it's got to hope happen over the course of like eight or 10 months. Yeah. And so, yeah, for this, for, for uh, Zach here, I, I totally agree. He's got to get a little bit fluffy. And Carl, I think that, yeah. is it Carl? Oh shoot! Question Sorry, six. Carl. My All bad. Good. I'm looking. I'm. I'm you, one. Carl. I'm too We're far sorry. ahead. <laughs> but um, some of this this recent uh, literature that we've got, you know, kind of on on how much of a surplus that you need to be to actually put on muscle has been super enlightening, and really has made me do a total 180 from my gain taining approach that even I used to have, like in back in 2015. You know, when we're finding out that the people with the most amount of natural muscle on the planet are sumo wrestlers, that kind of tells me I'm going to have to get some some pretty good weight on me in order to get that muscle on me, especially if I'm an intermediate, right? So yeah, you got to get that going up, okay? And then all the while, to put a little bit more of a of a example on Bert's um, talk about exercise form. I didn't have lats for the first probably 10 years of my bodybuilding career. You Just know, 10? I, I, could, <laughs> I could get shredded, you know, good chest, good quads, good delts, no lats. I looked like a, just a, a pole up there, you know, a shredded muscular popsicle stick. And it was basically because I wasn't really using my lats on a lot of my back work. You know, I'm doing the hitching and I'm doing the swinging. And I'm moving the whole stack, but I'm leaning to parallel to the ground and then bouncing into it, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, just I, I wish that something like the lifting library existed when I was in that 10 year hiatus of like no lat growth. You know what I mean? And then finally in 2008, I actually start initiating the movements with my lats, making sure that I'm not using momentum. No longer am I using the whole stack. And then boom, 2011, 2014, finally, I've got V-taper. I've actually yeah. got lats, you know. And so that's kind of an example of what Bert's talking about is sometimes, I mean, yeah, I was a solid intermediate, you know, thought I was doing everything right. But just that one hole in my game was really kind of making my physique not look as good as it probably could have mm-hmm. if I would have just attended that one little hole. Lifting library. I put a nice bow on it there. Yeah. Liftinglibrary.com. That's your bow. <laughs> um, okay. No, that was really that was really good. I know a lot of people have that that question. Cause damn it, year round beach lean is so good for the gram, yeah. y'all. Yeah. It's so you good. You know what? The, and recomp party. I mean, uh, here's the thing when it comes to like recomp changing the way you look, nothing is gonna impact that that the way um gaining muscle will yeah so mm-hmm. if you maximize that it's crazy how um because if you just, just keep going so if you just kept going five years later he'd look a little better than he does now just mm. muscle yeah, maturity yeah. weights would go up or but if it's yeah. like if you actually but if you invest a year you might get five years of that other type of gains in like nine ten months or something right and it's it's funny because a lot of these folks that want to recomp so bad it's like that's not the advice they'd give like their 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 peeps who maybe are asking them for advice. Like for all mm-hmm. I know, maybe Carl has a girlfriend that's like she won't get off the cardio machine. He's like, Come on, baby, come lift a little weights. I guarantee you it's gonna work so much better, you know? <laughs> so um so yeah, yeah, again, we get in our own way. And and even us, like we we still do ourselves and, and yeah. that's why we, we do rely on each other for for help when <laughs> we we get these weird ideas that, you know Yeah. <laughs> sound brilliant on paper. But uh, Or in our heads. Uh, really just yeah. in our heads. Yeah. Because we, we're good at moving the paper to match our heads. That's a thing, too. Oh, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. 